Hey everyone, hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So in this one, I wanted to basically show you how to build a scroll to top component. So as you can see on the right, I have a web page with a bunch of Lauren Ipsum kind of printed out. And once you scroll past a certain point, the button on the bottom right, this pink button will pop up, which a user can then click to go to the top of the page. So if you're interested in learning how to do that, I think it's a great learning experience for you all to learn how to build this with JavaScript a little bit of CSS and a little bit of HTML. So be sure to stick around if you're new to development because this will help increase your vanilla JS knowledge. And like always, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up and leave a comment because it helps my channel grow with the YouTube algorithm. So let's just go ahead and get started with setting up this project. So I went ahead and made three files for us. We have an index.html file, we have a style sheet, and we have a JavaScript file. And we're gonna go ahead and just do an exclamation mark and press enter and VS Code will kind of scaffold out an index file for us. And before we dive in deeper, we need to make sure we include a script.js file into the header. And then also the style, we could do like link of CSS and bring in that style sheet. So that should kind of set up our project and we are ready to go. Second note, I do have live reload working. So as I type and save, you'll see that my browser refreshes. Just check out this package if you want to set that up yourself. You basically just need to put a script in and it'll just start working. All right, so since we want to build a button that scrolls to the top of the page when it's clicked using JavaScript, what we could do is kind of set up some Lauren Ipsum to just generate a, a, a very large document body. So inside of our body, let's just make some paragraph tags and paste in some Lauren Ipsum. And if you see over here, as we paste in new paragraph tags and save them, they will show up. So let's just add like three more. And you'll notice here on the right that we have, you know, a decent amount of text that we can scroll through. And we should probably add a button at the bottom. We'll give it a class of like, scroll hyphen to hyphen top. And I'll just put text in, it says scroll to top. So basically what we need to do is when a user clicks on this button, we want to scroll the, the body to the top of the page, okay? So this is really useful if you're on like a blog site and you have a lot of text and you want the user to be able to go back to the top. Um, I mean, I don't know how useful it is honestly because they could just scroll like this and boom, they're at the top. But I've seen some sites use this. I don't know if it's good UX or if people can just go to the top by themselves. But anyway, so since we're just trying to learn here, let's just try to build it out. So we have a button that says scroll to top as a class. So we can kind of go into our script tag and just grab that button and put it in a variable. So I'm gonna say const um, scroll button is equal to document.query selector. And I will pass that scroll to top class here. That'll grab the DOM element from the page and put it in a variable that we can reference now. So just to kind of show you that, let's just print it out here. And it's printing out to null because I think I need to put async on this. Um, don't forget to put async here or else it'll run before the button's even on the page. So let me, let me take a step back. So when you import scripts into your head, you typically need to put async on them or else the JavaScript will run the moment it's loaded and this will pretty much run before the, the paragraph tags and the body are rendered to the DOM, which is why it's printing out null. So that was kind of a good bug that we encountered. Hopefully you learned something from that. So put async on the script. Another approach is you basically just put the script tag at the very bottom of your page right before the end body tag. Um, yeah, let's just keep it at the top though. All right, so we have the button here and we need to basically add an event listener. So when the user clicks on it, we scroll the body to the top. So I can say scroll button dot add event listener when they click it, call a function. And this one's pretty straightforward. If you actually Google this, you can go to like the uh, developer Mozilla site and they'll tell you how to do it. Um, there is something on the document called document element. So I can say document.document element dot scroll top. And this is how you can kind of change the body to go back up to the top of the page. And notice now when I click it, we are then forced to go to the top of the page. So that is basically the, the JavaScript implementation. I do believe if you want to make this work on Safari, you need to also call document.body.scrolltop. Um, I'm not gonna load up Safari, but just keep that in mind. Certain browsers had different ways that you need to call code to get it to work. So we got that running. Um, another thing I want to do is I want to make the button kind of stay static on the page. So what I could do is style it. And inside of this style CSS, we could just grab the button, so dot scroll top. I'm going to style that button and I'm going to give it a position of fixed. So this will make it fixed on the page and we could just give it a bottom of zero pixels and a right of zero pixels. And that should make it 
like always be fixed to the bottom right of the page. And here you have it. It looks pretty good. I don't think my head's blocking, but that should be good. So then you can click it on wherever you're at, right? Let's style it some more to make it like rounded and more apparent. So I can say border radius is 50%. Give it some fixed width and some fixed height. Let me make sure I spell that right. So then we got a button that's actually really big. Let me zoom out some like this. And we probably also want to move it away from the edge a little bit by maybe like 20 pixels. So that looks a little bit better. And unfortunately, it's blocking the text underneath it. So I don't know if you want to give it like some opacity of like 80% maybe. You can mess around with that. Maybe that doesn't look that good. But what you'll see on a lot of sites is typically they have like an arrow. Instead of it saying scroll to top, you'll have an arrow. So let me show you how you can basically import um, a library called Font Awesome to start making this look like an arrow. So let's go to CDNJS Font Awesome. And we will bring it in here. So go to the CDN library, cdn.js.com is where you can pretty much have all the hosted JavaScript libraries and style sheets that you want for the various libraries. And you can copy the first link here for Font Awesome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import that. So I can say link of CSS is equal to Font Awesome. Save that. And then we should have access to put a, an icon here, right? So I'm gonna go to the button that says scroll to the top. And instead of having some hard-coded text here, I'm gonna make an icon with a class. Um, actually, actually, I think I is an italicized, but this is typically the approach I've seen. You do an I element, and then for the class, you can simply put like FA, which stands for font awesome, and then I can say FA caret up, I think is what you can use. That looks pretty good. Uh, there's a bunch of different other font awesome icons that you can use. So if you just search for font awesome and go to their site, you'll see that you have a tons of tons of stuff. I could type up and you have a bunch of different arrows. Carrot up, chevron up is a good one too. Arrow up is a good one. Actually, that one might be better than what we got. Let's do arrow up. All right, so that looks a little bit better. Let's try to style it. So first of all, the font size could be increased like 50 pixels just so the arrow is larger. I'll maybe do 40. And the width and the height could probably be, I'll do 80. And then maybe the color could be like a gray. So I'll do like a 666. And there you have it. And also, you probably want to make the background color something cool. So I'm going to go to coolers.com and just find a nice looking color. All right. So let's do this one. This opal color looks pretty good. I'll copy that and I'll just add it to a background color here. Save that. And that actually looks pretty bad. Let's make a. <laughs> Let's change this to the arrow to a different colors too. Let's make this like a, a pink. This is the fun part about styling is you can pick whatever colors you want. Sometimes they look good. Sometimes they don't. Um, maybe it'll look better if this was a pink and this was like a white. That looks a little bit better. So the last thing you could probably do is like when you're at the top of the page, you probably want to hide this, right? You don't want people to see this um, when they are at the very top of the page. It's only when they scroll down as you should show this. So inside the, inside the script as well, what we could do is add like a window listener, I believe. Um, let's see if there's a window on scroll JavaScript. I'm going to Google this stuff because there is no shame. Yeah, so there's a document add event listener scroll. So what we could do, I think this will work. We add a scroll event here. I'm going to convert this to an ES6 arrow function. So whenever someone scrolls on the page, we just want to either hide or show that button depending on the scroll top. So if I say, what is the current scroll top? If the current scroll top is greater than, we'll say 50, then we want to show that button. So I could basically say scroll button dot, I don't know if there's a hide in JavaScript. There probably isn't, but I could do style dot um, uh, display of none. All right, so just change the style dynamically, else we want to show it as, I guess, block. Let's see if that works. So I have it backwards. If the scroll top is below 50 or equal to 50, that's when we want to hide it. Okay. So when you're at the top of the page, maybe even like 150 would be a better thing to check. And also you notice when the page first loads, that is when um, you'll notice that the button is there, but then you have to scroll for it to go away. That's kind of a bug. So what you want to do is probably abstract this out to a function. So I can make a function called like refresh button visibility. And that could just basically call that. So whenever you scroll, 
I'm going to call refresh button visibility. And then also when the page first loads, I will refresh the visibility. Okay, so that fixed that button there. And now I could just scroll to the top whenever I scroll down. And that is basically how you do it. All right, so I hope this tutorial was really interesting for you. I hope you learned a few things about JavaScript and how you can use it to scroll a page back up to the top. We also talked about how to import a third party library called Font Awesome to basically give you access to a bunch of different icons, which you can see here. And then uh, look into Live Reload if you haven't used it yet, but I have an extension over here that I can enable, and that'll basically make my browser refresh whenever I save any type of files. And uh, hopefully you learn some new things about these links I had set up. But yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also leave me a comment if you want to see a different type of UI widget created for you all. I can make a tutorial video for you. Uh, and then lastly, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm going to have a lot of videos like this in the future, which can help increase your knowledge in web development, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, you name it. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.